tonight, I just want to share real briefly, um, we're going to be looking at Deuteronomy chapter 31. Uh, tonight's study is called Confident Courage. Can everyone say that? That's not very confident. All right, ready? One, two, three. Confident courage. I didn't see everyone's mouth move, so I'm going to call on you. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Confident courage. As I was looking at this passage in my own life, I was thinking about why, 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 why this, God? Is it because we went to India? Is it because you're telling me to take a step of faith? God put this on my heart because we're supposed to have confident courage in Christ, not in ourselves. And as we look at this passage real briefly, this is an episode before uh, the Israelites cross over the Jordan River to the promised land of Canaan. But this is really Moses, is one of Moses' last conversation with the Israelites. And he's talking to the people, uh, almost in a sense, I'm going to pass the baton to Joshua. He's been faithful, he's been around, he knows what to do. And here's the instructions. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 1 says, Then Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel. And he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I like that. It was Moses' birthday, right? So, and he says, I can no longer go out and come in. Also the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself crosses over before you. He will destroy all these nations from before you, and you shall dispossess them. Joshua himself crosses over before you, just as the Lord said. And the Lord will do to them as he did. And the Lord will do to them as he did. And it says to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites and their land when he destroyed them. The Lord will give them over to you, that you may do to them according to every command which I have commanded you. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. Can we say that together? He is the one who goes with you. Remember that. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to come before you even now and we just ask, Lord, that you would have your way, that you would show us, you would guide us, you would direct our path, God. Lord, that you would show us exactly what you want us to do. You've called us to be on mission. You've called us to follow you. So thank you, Jesus, that you guide and direct us, Lord. We love you, God, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So what Moses is telling Joshua here is, I want you to have some courage. I want you to take what you've learned over these past several years being alongside, and I want you to put it into action. I love this. There are times in our own Christianity where God's going to say, I want you to step out. I want you to do something out of the ordinary, something unconventional, something that you would not choose for yourself, but I'm calling you to do. And maybe you're sitting here tonight, and God's calling you to step out, to walk out, to do something radical, something that is not in your nature. But like, check it out, church. We're not supposed to be natural. We're supposed to be spiritual. Amen? So let's get rid of the natural. Well, this is who I am. This is what I do. That's not who you're supposed to be. And so as I look at this, Moses is speaking and having this conversation with Joshua and the people. And this is what he said. I want you to be, have this confident courage. Let me tell you this. Courage does not come from within. Courage comes from him. And that courage is a byproduct of having confidence in the Lord. Having a trust, having a faith. I cannot be confident in of myself without the Lord. In our world today, they say, be confident. Believe in yourself, right? The greatest love of all is you, loving you. The greatest love of all is Jesus to us. So let's erase being self-confident and let's look into the fact that God has called us to follow him and to seek him. See, when fear or worry or anxiety comes into play, it's because we lack faith, is it not? We're not trusting, we're doubting. That's why we shrink back, that's why we cower, that's why we kind of fall back because we're trusting in ourselves and not in the Lord. And here in this passage, Moses is talking to the people and he says, um, I'm about 120 years old. And the Lord has said, I'm not going to cross. After all these years, 
I'm not going to cross over. The one thing I've been waiting for to enter in the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey, I'm not going to be able to go. And you think, wow, what a bummer. What a bum deal after all this that he's endured, right? But he says, I'm no longer able to be your spiritual leader. I'm not able to be your military leader. I, I can't. I'm limited. And some might say, well, he was 120 years old. Brother probably couldn't make it, right? You were thinking that. No, because in Deuteronomy 34, God tells him to climb Mount Nebo. So he's physically able to do that. So why couldn't he? God put a limit. God said you can't enter. And why? Because of sin. If you go back to the book of Numbers, the book of Numbers, the Israelites, as usual, is complaining and murmuring, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, right? And what happens is God tells Moses, hey, Moses, what I want you to do is you see that rock over there? I want you to speak to the rock and water is going to flow out. And you can imagine all these years, Moses, like, again, these people? Man, can't they just, like, just be satisfied? Can't they be content? Can't they just get it together? And so he hears this, and, and this is Moses. This is what he says here in Numbers 20. Here now, you rebels. Could you imagine that? Here now, you rebels. He says, must we bring water out of this rock? And so instead of speaking to the rock, he struck the rock twice. He beat the boulder. He misrepresented God. He should have been spiritual, but he was full of flesh. Anyone relate to that? Mm. Ouch. You ever been in a situation, maybe spiritually, maybe here at the church, maybe in your family, you know how you ought to act, but you don't act that way. Can I get an amen, all right? It's like, ah. And you, and, and you try in all yourself, it's like uh, that little childhood book, uh, The Little Engine, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. You try with all your might, but you're still incapable. And you know why you're incapable? Because you're relying on you and not being confident in the Lord. And so as I think about this, that's what happened. Moses could not enter into the promised land because he trusted in himself. He wanted to represent God. He should have represented God's holiness, but he represented his own anger. The one thing I want to look at even tonight is this passage that says here, And the Lord has said to me, You shall not cross over. Moses has this great relationship with God. Remember the burning bush? God says, hey, Moses, take your sandals off. This is holy ground. Even when God calls Moses to speak to Pharaoh to say, let my people go. You know what I mean? He, he, he tells him what he must say. And Moses is like, I don't know what to say. Say, I am who I am has sent you. And then even over the Red Sea, God says, stretch your hand over the water. God has this tight relationship with Moses. He's speaking to him even uh, with the commandments. The Bible says clearly that God spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to a friend. Wow. Face to face. Has the Lord spoken to you lately face to face? Have you encountered, have you engaged in a conversation with the Lord lately? You know, if you're here this morning, Pastor Jeff talked about how, how oftentimes uh, when we go to God, we think there's, we're going to be a, uh, on hold. We're never on hold with the Lord. He always answers us. One of the things that Pastor uh, Pat alluded to that we were able to do while we were in India was to pray. Pastor Guna, I, I, I liken him. He's like the, 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 the grandfather who tells you to do something you don't want to do, but you still do it anyway because he's a grandfather. Anyone know somebody like that? It's like, I don't really want to do it, but because he's saying I'm doing it, he's like, okay, now, you're going to go to the prayer stations and pray for an hour. I'm on an hour? That's a long time, right? That's an hour. And we did this several times. But on one of the orphanages, there were 60 stations, just like this picture, that says, uh, the Lord is our strength. And he said, I want you to go and pray there. So you'd imagine this orphanage, and there's 60 places, and each place is named after the names of God. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my provider. The Lord is my healer. On and on and on and on. 
And I remember sitting there and asking the Lord, God, show me, why am I here? And right at that spot where it says, the Lord is my strength, God says, my strength, not your strength, Dennis. Like, ah. I love it. The Lord, and I'll hold on to the verse on about you. With the Lord, whom the Lord loves, he corrects. So I received that correction. And, and as I pray, the Lord's like, you, you think your strength is enough. You think you're sufficient. But I complete you, not vice versa. And as I started to think about this, I was like, Lord, help me to understand that you want to speak to me face to face daily. And church, I want to encourage you, if you're not getting in the word or not spending time in prayer, do it. Have a relationship like Moses, where the Lord spoke to him face to face. And that's how you can have this confident courage. That's how you can know that God is faithful, by having this conversation with him on a regular basis. But not just that, it says in verse 3, The Lord himself crosses over you. He will destroy these nations from before you, and you shall dispossess them. Joshua himself crosses over you, just as the Lord has said. Three things I want to share with you tonight is, real briefly, the promise of God. Everyone say the promise of God. Number two, the power of God. Say the power of God. Uh, That's not very powerful. I don't know. uh, Okay, ready? One, two, three. The power of God. That's what I'm talking about. Finally, the presence of God. Uh, your volume got a little bit. Uh, okay. The presence, the presence of God. Oh, okay. So what's happening here in verse 3? God says this. He says, the Lord your God himself crosses over before you. He will destroy these nations from before you. You shall dispossess them. Joshua himself crosses over. God is making a promise. You're going to cross over. And as you cross over, guess what? There are going to be some en- enemies there. But don't you fret. Don't you worry. You will defeat them. I love this because God makes his promises to me, and the Bible says they're yes and amen. He keeps his promise. He is the ultimate promise keeper. If he said it, I believe it, I'll hold on to it. This Bible is full of promises for you and I. And oftentimes, I am fearful, I am anxious, I am worrisome because I forget the promises of God. He already told you. Haven't there been moments when you said, God, will you provide? And God says, I provide for the birds of the air and the flower of fields. Aren't you more precious than that? Do we forget? He says here, The Lord your God will cross over. He's going to go ahead of you. Whatever you are facing right now in your life, he's already there. He's all, I'm waiting. I'm waiting until you get here. But not only that, he says, I'm going to defeat. I'm going to destroy those nations before you. And not just that, whatever is theirs, I'm going to give to you. I'm going to deprive them. I'm going to strip them of those things and give them to you. It's almost like God said, what initially belonged to me, I will take And I'll hand it to you. And then he says, guess what? Joshua is going to cross before you. In Mark chapter 4, around verse 35, everyone knows this episode where Jesus, he tells the disciples, let's get in the boat. And they get in the boat. And Jesus takes a little siesta. He takes a little nap, right? And all of a sudden, what? The winds and the wave happen, and everyone gets stressed out. No, no, no. But what did Jesus say? We're going to go to the other side. And what did Jesus say? He's like, ugh. He probably didn't do that. But he got up, right, from his nap. And they said, Jesus, don't you care that we're going to die? And Jesus says, peace, be still. And everything calmed down. And beginning of uh, chapter 5, it says, when they got to the other side. Did Jesus keep his promise? They got to the other side. Whatever you may be facing right now, there may be winds and waves, there may be bills and hills, whatever it is, you're going to get to the other side. It's a promise God has made. In verse 4, it says real simply, And the Lord will do to them... As he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites and their land when he destroyed them. Moses says, uh, let's have a little history lesson here. A couple chapters back, 
these two kings, King Sihon and King Og. King Sihon, when we were passing through, he didn't want to let us go through. He, he held us back. And as a result, Israel and the Ammonites, Amorites went to battle. And guess who won? The Israelites. And King Og should have known better seeing that had happened. And guess what? He's like, oh, yeah, let's go up against the Israelites. Guess what happened? Israel won. I love the simple fact that not only does God keep his promise, God is powerful. God gives the Israelites this miraculous victory. They should have lost, but they won, and they take possession of the land. Let me just tell you this, church. Some of you all are sitting here today, and you've let the enemy take what rightfully belongs to you. Your mind, your purity, your body, your hearts, you've almost kind of given it up to him. And God says, take it back. You are a child of God. You are not a loser. You're on the winning team. So stop living like a loser. And he says, hey, if you want to gain your life, lose your life. Way too often, church, we, we don't allow God to give us that confident courage to say, that's mine. That's my reputation. That's my calling. That belongs to me because he my God gave it to me. See, if we understand that, then we'll pray for these miraculous victories. The power of God is this. He always wins. There's no army, nor political party. There's no king that's strong enough to destroy the power of my God. My God is so strong He's so strong and mighty. There's no one like my God. And so you may be facing something that seems impassable, impossible. How is this to happen? By the power of God. Do you realize when the disciples were in the upper room, the Holy Spirit came upon them, that dunamis power to do the impossible, to do what they could not do in their own strength, in their own power, right? Right? And the same is true for us. As God protect, pr protected the Israelites all throughout the wilderness journey, think about it. He took care of them. He fed them. He clothed them. He protected them. The pillar of fire by night so they could see the cloud in the day in the hot desert. Does not our God take care of us in the same way? He does. God provided a miracle you know God's track record when it comes to battles? Victory. Every single time. That's his track record. He is victorious every single time. From Joshua to Gideon to Elijah, remember that. Remember that when you go through your battles. Maybe your battle is up in here. Right? Right? Maybe your battle is physical. Maybe your battle is within your family. Whatever that battle you may face, realize God wants to give you his power. And he can handle it. He can take care of it. It goes on in verse 5. It says, The Lord will give them over to you that you may do according to every command which I have commanded. Moses simply says here, I will deliver you. And you know what? I want you to do according to what my command is. When it came to King Og, God said, don't leave any survivors. Handle it. Take care of it. Do it. David in Psalm 18 verse 37 says this, and this is when he being, he's being pursued by Saul. He says, I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were destroyed. David was saying in a sense, until every single one of these enemies are done, I'm not stopping. David was persistent. And how is he able to say that in Psalm 18, verse 37? I believe he's able to say that because he faced the giant earlier on. Amen? My kid's favorite story is David and Goliath, right? And why? 
Because sometimes we think, because David had all this courage. Okay, maybe. Because David was strong. Uh, kind of, sort of. He was a shepherd boy. Because David had a slingshot. A slingshot? Think about this. Sometimes we kind of glorify David. And it's like, man, he was so brave. He was so courageous. Can I just tell you, he just had confidence in God. Had nothing to do, oh yeah, he, he beat the bear, he beat the lion. That was prep, but against a giant? It was not his skill. It was not his intellect. It was his God. And when you and I face our giants, that's how we need to think. That's how we need to operate in and of ourselves. Think about this. David... He comes upon, he's bringing lunch for his brothers, and he's bringing lunch for his brothers. He hears this giant Goliath mouthing off, trash-talking Israel, scorning and shaming the people. And, and the Bible says David was indignant. It's like, oh, no, you didn't. You did not just talk about my God. Can I go a little side note on this? When we hear the world talk about our God, that should be our same reaction. Oh, no, you did not talk about my God. Oh, no, you did not take Jesus' name in vain. Right? Right? Oh, go, go. Um, I used to teach high school, and um, when I was teaching at Narmon High School, I'll never forget this. I think I've shared this before. Uh, there was a girl getting ready after school, getting on the bus, and she told me the story afterwards. And in line to get on the bus, one of the boys used, used uh, profanity with Jesus in it. And she turned around and said, oh, no, you did not just talk about my Savior. And just, and she said, and I go, what happened? The boy shut up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes, church, we need to stand up for our God. He can do it himself, but maybe he's calling us. It's not about politics. It's not Democrat, Republican. It's about my faith in Christ. And instead of standing up for all these different causes, Let's stand up for the cause of Christ. Because you could do all these things. You could be for every cause. But if that person is still going to hell, they're still going to hell. And so we need to be men and women who choose to represent Christ. Um, I'll show you the story. So in third grade, I know I'm going way back, going way back here. Uh, in third grade, I went to Broad Avenue, uh, which is in the city of Wilmington. Woo! Wilmington, okay, so uh, <laughs> there was a guy, a kid, uh, by the name of Brian, and uh, he used to bully me, I remember this, and I was predominantly Hispanic in a black school, and I remember I was one of a few Asian, I'm Filipino, and he would always go, hey, what's up, Chinese boy, uh, you eat rice every day, I was like, oh, no, right, but he was bigger than me, so I just kind of take it, I was like, all right, all right, and then there was this movie that came out with... Um, Sylvester Stallone, Rocky, dun, 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 all right? And I was like, okay. And I remember after seeing that, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to do this. And a friend of mine, Francisco, who's bigger than me and bigger than this guy, Brian, he says, I'll back you up. I'll back you up. You sure? You sure you're going to back me up? Okay. And so at lunch when this guy was making fun of me and, and I, I did a little, okay, I was, I was scrying a little kid. I was like, stop. You know, that was my thing, right? <laughs> and he looked at me like, did you touch me? Yeah. Yeah, I touched you, right? You know, in my third grade hesitancy. He's like, after school. I was like, oh, no, now I'm in trouble, right? I was like, whoa. Remember after school? Here we are. And I'm nervous as can be, right? I'm like, oh, I'm going to get beat down. I'm just, I'm just like thinking all this through my mind. And my friend Francisco was there. He's like, you got this, you got this, Right? So here he is after school, swing, make contact, yeah, dig, dig. And the dude's just standing like this, oh, you know, he's just like no effect whatsoever. And he swings, and I'm like, woo, swings again, dig. I'm like, ow, right? But the cool thing is my friend Francisco, he jumped in. Praise God, right? <laughs> he jumps in. And he socks the guy a couple times and goes down for the count. Well, not really down for the count, but he, he stops. And everyone breaks it up. Why do I share all that? Hey, if I'm going to get into a fight on my own, I know I can't. But I know he can. We're going to do some battles in, in this world. 
And on your own, you can't. But we got the greatest backup ever, don't we, church? He takes care of it. We got the promise of God. We have the power of God. And now the presence of God. The final verse says, Be strong and good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. We know in the book of Joshua, a lot of these words are repeated. And I'm sure for Joshua, there's a bit of insecurity. Like, I don't know, I can't lead like Moses. I I can't speak like Moses. I, I can't do a lot of things that Moses is doing. And maybe that's why the Bible records a lot of be strong and good courage. It says through the Psalms, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalm 31, verse 24, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all you hope in the Lord. And I know this to be true. If I believe God's promise and I believe God's power, it should fuel me to have courage. Remember, Moses says, hey, remember King Sion? Remember King Og? Remember what happened to them? Let me have a little history lesson with you, Israelites. Remember what happened back there? He'll take care of it again. See, God is not looking for this raw action hero who's going to try to do it on his own. He's looking for a man or woman with a humble, contrite heart. He's saying, God, I can't, but I know you can. That's what he's looking for, church. He's not looking for someone who has it all together, who has the smarts, who has the strength. Jeremiah says, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Don't let the the strong man boast in his strength, but let him boast in this, that he knows God. That's how you're going to win these battles. That's how you're going to step out in faith. That's how you're going to cross over. That's how we do it, church. We don't do it in our own strength. He says here, be strong, Joshua. Joshua had been depending on Moses for a long time. And it was time for Moses to pass the baton. Moses was getting up in age. And he says, Joshua, you're going to take over. And could you imagine maybe the fear that gripped Joshua? Man, that's a lot of people. Number one. Number two, it's a lot of complaining people, right? Number three, I don't know if I can. He says, be strong and good courage. And this is the thing I want to share with you. The reason why we can be confident, because God has done it before. Moses is speaking to Joshua knowing that I know all the stories about God. I've I've had the past experiences. I know that God never breaks his promise. Although the task, the battle, the giant seems bigger than you, it's not bigger than God. So whatever that might be upon your life, God is more powerful over our enemies. We have an arch nemesis. We have the enemy, Satan, who's after us on a regular basis. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So church, we need to start submitting to God first. That's where our allegiance is. It's not in and of ourselves. See, the reason why I can be, uh, have courage is not because I'm self-confident, but I'm God-confident. That's the reason why I have, can, can have courage in every situation that I face. The Bible says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear, right? Don't Fear or be afraid. Don't panic. Don't tremble. Don't dread. Don't be intimidated. Don't give in a second thought. Jesus says the same thing in John 16, 33. These things that I have spoken to you in me, in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer because what? I have overcome the world. Mic drop, right? <laughs> That's what it is. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. He ends here 
and he says, don't forget. Be strong and courageous. Don't fear. Don't be afraid. And you know why? Because I'm with you. He says here, I will personally go ahead of you. I'll never fail you. He's right there ahead of you. He won't let you down. He won't leave you. The reason why you and I can, can stand, can follow, can seek the Lord is because he is with us. And he won't leave us. He won't abandon us. I love that. The Bible says, Mother and Father have forsaken me, but my Heavenly Father, my God, has never forsaken me. As we were talking about a lot of the orphans there in India, their mother or father have forsaken them. And really, their, their ultimate father is, is Father God. And I believe for us, church, oftentimes we forget that. We sing it so often, he's a good good father and our father knows best does he not we may not like it but he knows what's best for us there's a scripture that was um, in my heart and my mind while we were in India and let's turn there real quick Romans chapter 8 turn to Romans chapter 8 and I want us to read this and if not highlight it in your Bible highlight it um, Record it, memorize it, because I think one of the ways that we can be confident and have courage in the Lord is simply this. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, I'm sorry, verse 38, I should say, it says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Nothing can separate us. Nada. Nothing. This is a picture of a mother and a daughter. Um, one of the things that they had in India was a widow's ministry. The woman, um, the young girl that's facing the camera, that's a daughter, and the mother uh, is on the other side. And this is their story. Her husband had been working in another city and he contracted the HIV virus. Without him knowing, he actually gave it to her. They had children. Their son had HIV. Their daughter, this daughter has HIV. Now, there was a way to get some medication in New Delhi. Uh, it cost about eight grand, $8,000. So they sell all they have and they move to New Delhi. In the interim, her son dies. She's devastated, goes back to her hometown. She goes to a wedding. And like biblical times, anyone who is sick, let's say leprosy, is considered unclean. She goes to a wedding. Someone recognizes her and says, she has HIV. She's untouchable. Immediately, everyone separates, and she's ostracized and kicked out of this wedding. She goes home, pours kerosene upon her, and lights herself on fire. You see her elbow? It's kind of scarred there. Her husband sees this, throws water upon her. A couple months later, he dies. She's a widow now. And part of the ministry is that we want them to be self-sufficient, self-sustaining. So I believe we bought her a goat. <laughs> that she could utilize for finances and whatnot. And it's biblical. Doesn't the Bible say take care of orphans and widows? And that's what we're able to do. And I remember sitting down with her, and I'm just blown away by this story. And I'm looking at, I could not help but see the scars on her arm and on her neck and other parts of her body. And I'm just like, wow. And she, she begins um, to quote Romans 8, 38, 39. None of these things can separate me from my love, from the love of my life, which is Jesus. And church, maybe we just need to remember that. Nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. That's how you and I are going to be able to cross over. That's how you and I are going to be able to take these steps of faith that God's calling us. 
That's how you and I are going to be able to battle those things that are facing us outside these doors. You realize some of you today, you're going to go home and it's going to be a different world. You'll get a phone call. You'll get a text. That's going to rock your world, but thank God he is the rock. So church, tonight we want to take some time and ask the Lord to give us that confident courage. We want to ask the Lord, God, I am weak. I am tired. I am worn out. I need your strength. Psalm 86 says, give your strength to your servant. Don't increase my strength, God. My strength is really weak. My strength is on empty. But if you give me your strength, God, then I'm able to keep going and cross over. And so tonight, what we're going to do, we're going to just spend an extended time just worshiping and praying and seeking God's face. Just as I us and the team were able to pray for an hour, you're not going to be for an hour, don't worry, but maybe it's Maybe you just need to take some time and seek the Lord and say, God, I've been trying to do this on my own. I confess. God, I put other loves before you. I confess. God, I want something that you told me no to and I still want it. I confess. God, I'm worried and troubled about a lot of things and I'm not serving you. I confess. And so I'm going to pray, and as, as we continue to worship tonight, we're just going to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And maybe it is you and your wife are here. Maybe God's saying, pray. Talk to me. Maybe you're here with a friend, and you feel prompted to share something that's on your heart that you're going through. And even the pastors will be down here. Maybe you need to uh, share these things that are in your heart. But let's, let's let the Lord speak to us as Moses was face to face With God, let's get face to face. Let's seek him. Let's trust him. Let's believe him. And when the time comes, you will cross over. You will cross over because he promises it. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to come before you tonight, and we thank you that there's nothing that could ever separate us from your love, and you've called us to walk by faith and not by sight. And you know those things, Father, that are upon our heart, upon our mind. Those things, God, that, that you're really trying to impress upon us. Would you just be with us tonight as we worship you, as we pray with one another, as we seek prayer, as we lift our hands in adoration, as we lift our hands in praise, as we lift our hands in surrender tonight, God. Holy Spirit, you're, you're welcome here. You are welcome here, God. So thank you for what you want to do tonight. Thank you, God, for being with us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.